Welcome back. Dalmia Bharat posted good earnings. The revenue is up 32%. Margins have expanded and the company has repaid gross debt of 2,200 crores. So FI21, at least towards Q4, has been very good for Dalmia Bharat. Puneet Dalmia, Managing Director, joins us now. Good morning, Puneet. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, well, I'm going to start with the current quarter because, like we know, I, the Q4 has been excellent. What are the early trends in April? Uh, usually, April, May, June is very good for cement companies as people quickly want to finish up construction before the rains. Uh, how is it panning out? Uh, look, just before I answer that, let me just take you through the whole year. I think first time we crossed 10,000 crore in revenue. Okay. First time we crossed 1,000 crore in BAT. And our net debt to EBITDA is 0 0.04. We repaid 2,200 crores in the whole year and 850 crores this quarter. So overall, I think, you know, in a tough year, where we started with a lot of uncertainty. I think I'm very happy that our team has delivered a very strong set of numbers and great performance and terrific teamwork. Having said that, I think the second wave has uh, uh, you know, started and it is quite different from what it was last time. Uh, we are seeing earlier the response was national lockdown and we did not really know what was gonna happen. Our preparedness on vaccines, et cetera, was quite low. But now we are seeing many lockdowns at different places at different points in time. So we are seeing that, um, um, you know, we need to be very flexible and adaptive in our planning. And we have to have very localized strategies. When there is a start, you know, we can really, uh, you know, supply material to people and gain market share. And when there is a stop, we need to be very prepared that whenever it starts, we are ready with the, you know, start of factories. So we have very strict protocols in all our factories. We have very strict protocols in terms of uh, work from home, who can enter in regional offices, corporate office, et cetera. So I think um, I personally believe that the volatility will create some weakness in demand in the short term, but eventually it will pick up. If we saw last year, first quarter was minus 30% YOY, but eventually it went to double digit growth by Q4. So it was a V-shaped recovery. My personal view is things should stabilize in the next four to six weeks. Uh, but this is the time fear factor is high. We have stepped up the engagement with people and, you know, physical and emotional well-being of people across our ecosystem, employees, vendors, dealers, is our top priority right now. Oh, sure, so yeah. we are seeing some weakness in demand, but uh, we think this should stabilize in the next four to six weeks. Okay, uh, got that, Puneet. But, you know, this is that's why it's cash 22, that you are seeing some weakness in demand now. And a huge push on the cost side. I mean, look at <clears throat> your power and fuel expenses are up 47%. Freight is higher. Other expenses are higher. Have you undertaken price increases in April? Uh, if so, if you could tell us by how much and how are you going to deal with this? Is demand compression at the same time there's raw material inflation? So, look, we've seen this before. And I think last year was far greater uncertainty and far less preparedness than what we have today. I think, um, you know, there is uh, going to be uh, cost increase uh, in some areas. We have revised our fuel mix quite dramatically. Uh, Petco costs went up from 60 to $130 per ton because of increase in shipping freights as well as increase in base prices. Diesel prices went up because of it, logistics cost went up. So I think we are undertaking two things. One, in terms of our fuel mix, we have reduced the Petco percentage to 52% as compared to 85 to 90%. So I think we have a very flexible uh, you know, plant and depending upon uh, you know, the cost of the fuel and the, you know, productivity that we desire from the plant, we can rejig our fuel mix to optimize cost and productivity. That's point number one. Even in terms of logistics cost, I think, um, you know, we are optimizing, uh, you know, our costs across our network. We are relooking at our warehouse footprint. We are relooking at um, uh, ensuring that, um, you know, we can... Uh, you know, do a, we, we can plan a better market mix where we sell closer to our plants as opposed to far away. So I think there are optimization projects which are going on. And I'm quite confident that we will be able to mitigate, you know, some of these cost increases in the coming quarters. Having said that, I think the prices are dependent, dependent upon, de upon demand supply scenario. And, uh, you know, we saw uh, in East India, for example, we saw a very uh, low set of prices in Q3 and it was almost at a five year low. But um, you know, as demand recovered, that region was growing at double digit, high double digit growth, so like 19, 20% growth. Uh, as demand recovered, prices also recovered in Q4. 
Now, of course, this is a seasonal industry. This is a industry which is dependent upon uh, you know demand supply for sure, and prices will remain volatile through the year, depending upon how the uh, COVID strain pans out and um, uh, you know how the uh, you know supplies get commissioned. There are even restrictions Puneet, on the supply quantify side. Quantify the price hike, so, please, example, Puneet. Puneet, uh, Puneet. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm butting in because we're running a little short on time as well. Can you quantify the okay, price sorry. hike in Q4? And if you have taken any in April, if you could just tell us, uh, 5%, 10%. I think the prices varied across regions. And I think in Q4, uh, the prices went up by around uh, 5 to 7%. And in April, they are still currently stable. They have not gone down as yet. Okay. What is the uh, installed capacity likely to be uh, at the end of FI22? Uh, and since you have now uh, you know, less debt load, Will you plan for the capex, either inorganic or organic? Our current capacity is around 31 million tons. We are in the process of executing another, uh, you know, five and a half to six million tons of capacity increase in terms of Murli and our grinding unit in Odisha. So our total capacity should be around 37 million tons. We are also going to revisit our capex plan given the current pandemic situation, and we are going to decide how much to pace it. So I think uh, we will be able to give more visibility on this next quarter. Uh, and depending upon how the situation evolves, we will take care. And what about the stake in IEX? Uh, monetize at some point to pay for the CapEx. Any plans at all? So I think our balance sheet is very strong right now. We guided the market that we are not going to sell this. Uh, we are not going to increase mm -hmm. the uh, exposure in IEX. And this investment has done well for us. From 450 crores of investment, it's now 2,000 crores mark to market. Having said that, you know, uh, we are going to come up with a capital allocation policy also uh, very soon. And as and when the business needs demand, you know, we will, uh, you know, uh, put uh, most of our capital into our cement business. But I think we will come up with a very detailed, uh, you know, uh, capital allocation policy very soon. I think we are facing it because of the pandemic and we want to just evaluate how the situation pans out and based on that our capex plan and our capital allocation policy will be shared with the investors i verbatim expected this answer when i asked you last time you said the same thing we will come back with a capital allocation plan we are still waiting. i agree lata i agree lata i agree lata there is a very uh, fluid situation in the market okay, right now fair enough uh, and i think uh, we want to you know, evaluate all angles of it and take a considered decision. Fair. These are not decisions that you take in a knee-jerk manner. Fair. I agree that we are three months late and we will come back on this for sure. Fair point. The 350 crore has come back? The, the mutual fund thing? Yes, uh, it's all in the bank. Okay, good. Credited in our account. It was 344 crores, mark to market number 390. Okay. It is in a, it's a part of our treasury now and that uncertainty is gone. All right, good. Thank you very much, uh, Puneet Dalmia, for joining in and giving us the nitty-gritties of your Q4 numbers and expectations of FY22. Have a safe year ahead. Thank you, Lada. Stay safe and, you know, wish you all the best and uh, all your viewers all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's uh, Dalmia Bharat on the good set of numbers. Let's shift focus to commodities.